Hello fellow Wysians, it's been a few weeks since my last confession, uh, I mean update. Uh, it's been quite wild, a lot of stuff has happened on the inside, personal development and things like that. So I haven't really felt like pushing something out to you. But now I have a lot of cool stuff going on in the next few weeks. Now I'm just about to head out, beautiful Stockholm city view here. Uh, and I'm heading out to the airport and going to one of my favorite places in the world. Iceland. I have six days of time and it's going uh, setting up towards midsummer, the summer solstice and I felt for a long time I wanted to do something really special. I invited some friends over, that changed so now I'm going by myself. Um, I wanted to hang out with my Icelandic friends, everybody so uh, strung out on, on the football so nobody really cares about anything else. Um, there's just a lot of moving pieces, so what I ended up deciding to do is to rent a small camper, a small car, or a like a, a big, bigger small car, um, and um, and to rent that one and and to drive around Iceland in six days. It's 1,700 kilometers, so it's going to be full on, about 300 kilometers a day. I need to do. And there's there's one road around Iceland. It's called the Ring Road, and it's the road number one. And you can go either from Reykjavik, you can go down south or you can go up north. And my initial feeling is to go down south. Because um, if I have enough time while I get up to the other side, the northern side to Akereri, where I've never been to, even though I've been to Iceland multiple times, I really want to spend some time there if I have time. If not, then I'll just drive straight through. This is a trip for me. This is a trip for me to rediscover myself, who I am right now. Um, ever since I turned 40 in beginning of January, I felt a lot of movement has been going on. A lot of stuff has happened in my life, but I haven't really had the time to be in an environment, in a space where I feel very comfortable to just relax and just um, you know think about my life, where I want to go, what are the new challenges, what are the new opportunities that I have in my life as a 40-year-old man. And I also have a script that I've been working on for many, many years. And finally, uh, after some years of total silence on that part, I got some new ideas and I got some new insights. So I know being in Iceland gives me a lot of creative energy. I have this vision of just sitting in a, in a spot um, with beautiful views and just writing my script and see how the elementals and how the fairies and all of the strange things that are happening in Iceland how they will um, support me in my journey. Welcome to Iceland, back in Reykjavik. Um, I didn't tell you before what I'm actually gonna do here in Iceland, except for driving around the Ring Road. And that's because I hadn't decided when I was in the plane yet what I was gonna do. But I did decide on the airport in Stockholm. I'm gonna drive around, obviously. I'm gonna visit as many hot springs as I can. And the reason for that is, I love hot springs. It's fairly simple. And I want to go to them anywhere, anywhere I go in the world. So now I'm going to drive around and visit all of the best hot springs in Iceland. Uh, the ones that I can access to, because I'm going to have a camper van that I can't access to F Rose, which needs a 4x4. So I'm going to have to satisfy myself with the ones that are close to the ring road. And I already looked into some on the plane, and the, I know several already, but I looked into some more, and they're freaking spectacular. But first, I'm gonna go to Hapnafjordur to meet my good friend Sola and her husband Elis, and hang out with them for a while. And they're gonna stock up with some food, and then head out to the first hot spring, which is in Reykjavik, and has access to the sea. And from there to Reykjadalur, which is my absolute favorite hot springs I've been to so far. I'm probably gonna camp there overnight in that area and then head out straight in the morning eastbound for the next adventure. So finally, after quite a long wait, I got my car, I got my palace, I got my transport, I got my home for the next six days. Rent.is, uh, go Iceland. I rented this camper where I can sleep. I'll show you more in a while when we get into it. But now I'm heading off into Hapnafjordur 
to hang out with Sola and Ellis. Uh, this took a little bit longer than I was expecting, so if you're if you're renting it, just be aware that it might take some time. Uh, they're quite slow, and there's a lot of people, especially this time of year. So I'll see you soon again. So obviously, when you come to Iceland, you have to start by going to Glow, which is the best raw food, superfood, vegan, vegetarian, non-vegan, vegetarian restaurant in Iceland and probably in the whole universe. It's my good friend Sola who owns it. We've known each other for years and years. And with her, I'm gonna start planning my trip in more detail and have some great uh, dinner. Are you going to the women's runners? I am. Here we are with Sola. She's my fairy godmother and the proprietor of GLOW here in, in Reykjavik. How are you doing? I'm doing so good, especially seeing you. I miss you, Christopher. I miss Don't you too. Don't be away from me for so long. No, I need no, to come back to Iceland yes. more often. Yes. But it's only been like four months, no. Two and a half months since we yeah. saw each other. Yeah. But that's more than enough time. That's more than enough. Yeah. So what do you think about my trip of visiting all of those hot springs? Oh, that's the most delicate trip I've ever heard about. Have you have been to a lot of hot springs in Iceland, right? Yes, almost all of them, but not all. Okay. You, you have some secret one on your list. Ooh. Yes, you have. Next time you'll come with me, okay? Yes, yes, yes. You'll be Talk my private, that. private Talk chef. Look out for that. So earlier today I was feeling a little bit annoyed when I was traveling, and it wasn't until I removed my shoes that I realized why. And the reason was, I was wearing these. Yuck. I took them off and I put on these and instantly I felt a lot better. So what's the lesson? Vibrams, five fingers. So from Sola at Glow, I already got stuff to keep me for a little while. And I have a kilo of cashew nuts, but I'm gonna go to Kronan to get the rest. I have everything I need for now and I'll stack up more as I go along. As you can see here on this car, the midnight sun flows and so do the hot springs. So this car is totally in line with what I'm doing here. Speaking of hot spring is the name that comes into people's mind first is the Blue Lagoon and I've already gotten this question. Christopher, are you going to the Blue Lagoon? And the answer is hell no. I've been there once, more than enough. Don't need to go back. Heavy recommendation. If you want to have that experience, go ahead. It's way overpriced. It's not that cool. The water actually comes from the nearby geothermal power plant. And that's the water you're bathing in compared to a lot of other places where the water is actually fresh from the earth or it, it's used to heat up fresh water, fresh spring water. One thing you gotta remember in all around Reykjavik and most places in, in Iceland, the water that you get from the tap is actually spring water, which is quite unique. So pretty much anywhere you go, you can get fresh spring water out of the tap. Sometimes you also get fresh uh, geothermal water, the warm water usually smells a little bit like sulfur. Older houses have that, some of the bathing pools have that. But Blue Lagoon, way overpriced, way overrated. The places I'm going to tonight is, is two of my favorite ones. And when I say tonight, it's already uh, eight, close to eight o'clock at night here. And it's not gonna get a lot darker than it is right now. So I expect to maybe around midnight, I'll be in my second place, which is my favorite place on earth, Reykjadalur. 
And where I'm going now is Neutalsvik, which is a geothermal beach. They have a geothermal bath and the ocean. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, hot, cold, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, cold, hot, cold. You start with cold. Sorry, I said wrong. You start with cold, you finish with cold. That's where I'm going next. Boom. This is usually where the hot water flows out. But apparently now it's not open. That's a shame. But it also comes out here in the sea. It comes out here through these vents. Anybody who's ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy probably remembers Don't Forget Your Towel. So when you're going on an epic six-day journey all around Iceland to visit most amazing hot springs in the world, what is the thing that you shouldn't forget? It's your freaking towel. And what do you think I forgot? My freaking towel. So I'm gonna go there in the water and then just dry without a towel because that's just how I roll. And I'll go get a towel later, tomorrow, maybe, because the shops ain't open after seven o'clock in Iceland anymore. Be aware of that. So, greetings from Natalsvik. Um, I'm sitting here in the so-called warm, hot spring, hot pool. And it's not really that warm. Um, the place is not open where the real warm water comes in. And where I'm sitting right now is kind of like a circle um, where the warm water gathers. But somebody didn't turn the faucet on because it's not really that warm, but hey, I'm finished. I'm used to the cold, so I don't really care. The seawater is quite cold, so before I leave here, I'm gonna go dip in the seawater just to kind of get the get the cold to work my body temperature up. And then I'm gonna go to another hot spring that's pretty close here, uh, just to get the heat up before I drive out to Reiki Dollar, which is about a half an hour away. Now I'm a little bit warmer because I'm here. This is Kvika. It's called a foot bath. But when I'm here, it's just a bath. One of my really favorite places here in, in Reykjavik. And uh, it's, an, it's an art installation. But you can come and hang out here. You can bathe your feet if there's many of you or if there's only one of you. And you can do like me and just bathe in it fully. I had to come here and just warm up before heading out to Reykjavik Dollar. Uh, yeah, it's already 9.30 and it doesn't really get any any darker. Land of the Midnight Sun. Let's hit it. I'm gonna stay here for a while. I bought some, uh, this is what I'm gonna enjoy here. Some coconut water. Uh, Reykjadalur, a path to a warm natural bath. So this is where we are right now. We're gonna go about 45 minutes all the way up there. And then there's the other side where you can come in. It didn't used to be marked. A few years ago, there was nothing here. Now everything is marked. This is how it looks. You'll see it later. From here, it's about a 45 minute hike up that mountain right there. There's another path to come in, which is a little bit quicker, uh, but you have to have a 4x4 to get there. So I couldn't come, I had to come this way. It's beautiful, it's a nice walk, it's a nice hike. It's pretty intense, but after that, I'll get into the hot pool and I will show you my favorite place in the entire world. So are you ready to see the magical spot? I want to warn you though, it's not as cool as it used to be because there's buildings here or there's, there's stuff that they built here for people to walk on. When I came here the first time six years ago, there was nothing here. 
So when I came here the first time, we came from up there, all the way up there, the other path, walk down here. And once you, when you get up here, the view you get from this valley used to be spectacular. Now it's not that cool anymore because they built all that crap here, understandably though. But some of the magic has disappeared. Well, obviously where you see the steam come up, that's hot springs, boiling water. And it mixes together with cold, ice cold spring water that comes through the mountain here. And there's another river that we're gonna see in a second that also has glacier water, melting glacier water. Now they've closed off this area from here up and the reason is understandable because this water is boiling. There's a boiling waterfall a little bit up, up the stream from here. It's pretty spectacular, but you can't really access it anymore. Probably because a lot of people have hurt themselves. It's about 1.30. I've been in a hot tub or hot river for the last hour and a half. I feel kind of warm uh, and fluffy. It's a different energy here for sure than it used to be. It's not bad, but it's, it's just not the same thing, you know. Uh, when I came here, there were people playing music quite loud. You know, everybody's talking. Um, it's just different, you know. I miss the old Reykjadalu. And people are running here back and forth on this. Of course, people should be able to move, but it's a little bit discouraging where this is going and if the sacredness of this space will we'll keep, you know, I, I used to have very, um, I still have a lot of, I still have a lot of respect, but it felt like everybody who was here had a lot of respect for this place, but it's, it's changed a little bit now. But it is what it is. I'm gonna show you the cold river and uh, I'm gonna go take a plunge. So this is the cold river. It comes all the way up there from somewhere. And apparently it's a glacier that feeds this combined with uh, spring water. This used to flow a lot faster, so the, the kind of cool spot is, is right there when those uh, rivers meet. But it's a little bit different now because of the, the you know the stuff they built, so the kind of best spots are taken. Uh, but this changes, it varies a little bit how much it flows, and now it flows quite slowly. So, it's 2.30, I just came back from Reykjadalur, took me about, about 40 minutes to walk back, a little bit faster than when I went, I was in a little bit of a hurry. Usually when I go to springs or any shower or anything, I start with cold, then I go hot, then I go to cold, then I go hot, and then I finish with cold usually two times, and that's what I did as you saw as well but this was a little bit different i got really really cold of course because i didn't have the the towel with me i can still feel my face a little bit ah, i can't really speak but that's fine um, i'm gonna drive out from reykjadal east towards the next stop uh, and um, see where i end up for the night um, it's gonna i'm probably gonna drive an hour or so and then crash somewhere nice where I can wake up in my own time. It's been a great first day, it's been a long day, it's been a fun day, exciting day. 
great getting out from Reykjavik, out from the city and into the countryside. I'm ready to hit the road and start exploring more. So I'm gonna have a good night's sleep now, soon, when I get there. And first, I'm gonna drink some smoothie, courtesy of Glow Sola. Yes, awesome. Bye-bye. <laughs>